Hi guys, uh, I'm going to do another quick how-to video. This was something I was playing around with the other day. Uh, something I want in the space game is kind of more uh, kind of RTS elements. So you'll be able to meet NPC characters while flying around the the solar system, and they'll be able to provide like different uh, services and stuff. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to do a couple of quick how-to videos on uh, doing a dialogue tree, and we're going to cover things like. Um, uh, serializing data into XML uh, using .NET. Um, just the rough design of uh, of the of the dialog tree, which allows users to uh, select options um, to to like talk to the NPC players, and based on those options, we'll be um, doing different actions, which will get passed out to different components in the game. So what I've done is we're not going to do anything in Unity today. It's just just in uh, Visual Studio. I've created uh, these two projects here. There's Dialog Tree, which is a uh, DLL style project, and Dialog Test, which is a um, uh, what do you call it? Um, a console project. And if we run that now, you'll see we get a little console window. Dialogs in green. Options are in green. Uh, so. NPC says, hi, welcome to the test dialogue, and uh, if I say you smell, it will say, well that's rude, I don't want to talk to you anymore, and your option is exit. So we've got two different things here, we've got conversation nodes, which allow you to go onto another conversation node based on an option, and then you've got a conversation node like this one, where the only option is exit. So if I click one, it'll exit back to the desktop. If we run that again, this time I say hello. Um, we got hi. My name is NPC name here. These are just blank spots at the moment. These will obviously be filled in with uh, with other background data in a later how to. Uh, so you can say you know my name is blah blah blah. Call me whatever. So my name is blah blah blah. Nice to meet you. Blah blah blah. And because this is an exit node as well, we've got uh, one to exit. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to uh, draw a quick diagram showing you how the the data is organised in this, and then we'll continue. Okay, so here we are in Inkscape, and uh, this is the basic data structure that we we're going to be creating. Um, it's basically a node tree. It's made out of nodes and options, which are the, the sort of the transitions between nodes. So nodes can have multiple options, and uh, these are represented by an object. These are represented by an object. There's a start point, which is always the first node in the, the list of nodes. Uh, and each node has text and an action. Actions we've not implemented yet, the text we have. So the text is what the NPC is saying uh, for that part of the conversation, and then the options are what your character is saying. Uh, and then the actions will be something like, you know, open the shop window or, you know, turn hostile and exit, that sort of thing. So what we're doing is we've got nodes, options, and uh, then we have exit node. Now an exit node will have an option with null. And so if it has one option that's null, then uh, it will go to an exit point. And the exit points I've illustrated here can go anywhere. They don't have to go on the last node, they can go on any node that has a null option. So that's basically that. If we switch back to the code, uh, you can see I've got dialog, which is the, the, the object that holds the entire data structure dialog node, which is uh, the, the data structure for the node, and dialog option, which is the data structure for the option. So if we go and start with the dialog, uh, this has a public list of dialog nodes called nodes. It also has some functions called add, uh, for add node and add option. And these are the two, when we're constructing a dialog programmatically rather than loading it from an XML file, this is how we'll do that. Dialog node. Dialog node has a, a node ID which is used to reference it inside the XML file. If it's minus one, it doesn't exist yet. Um, we've got a, a string for text, which is what the NPC will say, and this will have formatting options eventually, like you saw in the demo where the text is, um, uh, like the example text was, uh, you know, player name or NPC name. Uh, and then we've got a list of dialog option objects called options. We've got a, an empty constructor and uh, we've got a, uh, a regular constructor. In fact, actually, that shouldn't matter. The, the empty constructors are used by the XML serialization. 
um, which do require one empty constructor. Um, that should probably be in there. Uh, this works nonetheless, but you know, probably for best uh, best practice. And then we've got dialogue option. Now, dialogue option is the the text that your character is saying. So it's again got a, a string text, and it's got a, an integer destination node ID. And this is um, uh, this is used in the XML file to reference where this option is going to go, which node this option connects to. And again, we've got the same uh, empty constructor for the serialization, uh, or sorry, parameterless constructor, not empty. Um, and then we've got a, a regular constructor for us constructing them programmatically. So then in this program, uh, this is in the dialog test, and I need to pull all of these static methods um, into uh, probably the dialog option. This is just to quickly demonstrate how it works. Uh, we've got our main method, and we're just creating a new dialog using the load dialog, and then we're running that dialog. So if I open up that file, so this is the this is what we've got constructed. And you can see that we end up with a dialog node. Uh, that node has an ID, it has text, and then it has a, a list of options. And so the first option has a text and uh, a destination node of one, and the second option has text and a destination node of two. So when you select the you smell option, it's going to go to node one, which is the next node down. These are in uh, zero indexed. Um, numerical order in the XML file. We've got uh, node ID 1 which you remember we've got to by selecting you smell uh, and that is uh, got the text, well that's rude I didn't want to talk to you and the text option is exit and the destination node ID is minus 1 and we're using that to um, determine whether the uh, whether we're an exit node or not. And then it goes on the same thing, dialog uh, node ID is 2, we've now got these NPC names and player name parameters and these will be swapped out when the conversation is loaded based on uh, the current NPC, obviously the current NPC's name and the player's name in the, play in the game data. So that's it. This, uh, this could probably stand to be organised a, a little bit better, I've just used the default serialization. Um, I've not done any custom attribute names uh, yet, although I'll probably sort that out in future. So that's basically how we're constructing this. We've now got these uh, run dialog and run node. These are just formatting out that text on the um, uh, on the con on the console, and these will obviously be replaced with Unity methods that will show it in a nice GUI window with all the options, and you can click on them and that sort of thing. And what this is doing is it's printing out the printing out the um, the, the MPC dialog or the MPC text. It is then um, looping through all the options in the current node and printing out the options and then it takes uh, it reads the player's input which is a number character and uh, it then tries to pass that as a string and goes to the next node and returns the next node. The entire dialog is basically handled by setting the node ID to zero which will get the first thing which is the entry node uh, and then while node ID does not equal minus one it just keeps talking so then I've got this, this is uh, this was just setting up the basic um, conversation or the basic dialogue and this is how we would um, create a dialogue programmatically and what we're doing is we're creating some nodes uh, and these obviously you can see these are the text that went into the XML file we are then adding those nodes to the, the dialogue using the add node method and then we're adding options with option text and the node and uh, destination. This is the text we want, the node it's attached to, and the destination node. And because these two are destination uh, have a destination node of null, it will set that to minus one in the XML, and, uh, and that is how we're determining that these are exits. And then you can see here we've got the use smell option it goes on node one and it transfers to node two. And you see node one here was welcome to the test dialog and node two as well. That's rude, I want to exit. At the end of this, I'd serialized it out into this test XML. XML serialization.net is pretty simple. We create an XML serializer, uh, type of what we want to serialize, in this case a dialog object. We create a stream writer, which basically just outputs text into a file, and we say we give it a path to write to, and uh, and then we 
will serialize with the stream and uh, what we want to write. And that then goes off and creates a, fo a file, turns everything into an XML structure and writes it into a file. And load dialog does exactly the same but the opposite. So we're creating a serializer type of dialog. We're then creating a reader, and uh, this is a stream reader which reads text from a file. Um, and we're passing in path, which we've passed in as a, a parameter in the function. Uh, and then we're creating dialog equals converting. Uh, we're, we're casting this as a dialog because it will the serializer deserialize returns an object. Uh, and then we're calling serializer deserialize with the reader. So we're basically saying this is a stream to this file, and then I want you to convert this file into that object. And then we're returning that object. And you can see we use this up the top here, saying dialog dire equals load dialog test dire. And what I should probably do is these will probably, um, oh, sorry, uh, this one should go into the dialog uh, object as a static function because that's going to be used wherever. So then finally, we've got adding and uh, adding nodes and adding objects. We saw us using those functions a second ago. Uh, and these are just gonna these are just provide nice structured ways of us adding objects to the to the list. So we've got this dialog uh, list of dialog nodes called nodes. We could just add stuff to it, but that's messy. Um, what we want to do is we want to have a, an add node function that takes a node and uh, and then deals with that nicely. So what we're doing is if it's uh, if the current node we're adding is null, then uh, then it's an exit node and we skip adding it. If this is null, we don't want to add a null object object to this list, but we're using null destination to signal that the destination is an exit node. So if it's not an exit node, or if the what we've just passed in here isn't null, we are then uh, adding the node to the list here, just using the standard list add. Uh, and then we are getting the index of that, and we're setting the node ID uh, of the node we've just added. So then adding options is slightly more complicated and what we're doing is we're passing in the text for the option, we're adding, uh, passing in the node that that option belongs to and uh, the node that that object is going to, go, uh, that, op that option is going to navigate to next. So first up, if the, if nodes in this dialog doesn't contain the, the destination node then we're adding it. And if it doesn't contain the parent node then we're adding it. So that makes sure that if we pass in uh, a node object that doesn't al isn't already in the dialog, then that makes sure it's set up here. And these obviously just call that and carry on. We're then creating a, a dialog option object. Uh, if the destination for the object is null, we're setting the object to a new dialog object with the text we've passed in and a minus one value. And if it's not null or we have a destination node, so this isn't an exit option, then we're setting the uh, the dialog options net destination node ID to ID and passing in text. And then we finally we're adding that into the options list. I think this is these sort of data structures are much easier to understand in a dia in a diagram form. So I'll put that up on the screen if you want to pause that and take another look. So right, I hope this has been a useful, interesting tutorial. Uh, this is the first part of a a few little mini how-to videos that I want to do um, around the dialog tree. We're going to then go on and have uh, probably a Unity one next, where we're creating a little GUI window and creating a GUI window to display this same data. So instead of a console, we're going to uh, have a Unity project with a, a Unity 5 GUI. Okay, um, thanks for watching. And if you like the video, stick a you know hit the like button. Uh, if you have any questions, stick them in the comments or join the Facebook group, which is the best way to keep track of all of these videos. Uh, and there's a link for the Facebook group in the comments below. Um, if you do like these, uh, I've got a Patreon running at the moment, and the the goal of that is to basically be able to afford to spend more time doing these. Um, at the moment, I'm trying to cram these videos in wherever I have a free second and. Uh, uh, what I want to be able to do is actually be able to take off, say, you know, a day every week and dedicate it just to doing these game videos. So that would be great. I'd really, uh, I'd really love to do that. And with your support, I probably can. So check out the Patreon page, which is also linked in the description. And uh, good luck with all your games. Feel free to use this code in your game. And um, rock on, guys. See you later. Bye.